outpouring of rage and grief in London over the murder of 33-year-old Sarah Everard and the fear that women across the country live with every day. Thousands of people packed into this public square, the same part of town where Everard was last seen. She disappeared while walking home at night and was later found dead. A Metropolitan Police officer has been charged with her murder and kidnapping. And for women in the UK and all over the world, Everard's murder is proof that the fear they live with is real. The fear of simply walking down the street or across Clapham Common, as it is here, as, as women knowing you're not safe. Well, earlier, Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, made a private trip to Everard's memorial. Here she is seen in the screen jacket. A source tells us she wanted to pay her respects to Sarah and her family and that she remembers what it felt like to walk around London at night before she was married. But not long after the crowds gathered, police broke up the vigil, citing coronavirus dangers. There were clashes, as you can see here, as police handcuffed and dragged mourners away. The police response is outraging government officials and civilians alike. Hi guys, and many thanks for joining me. If you are new to my channel, hi, hi. I'm Kat, and this is my husband Angelo. Hi. And it turns out that lately, I'm not the only one talking about true crime. He's interested as well. Mm. So we thought we will give this type of video a go and uh, see how it goes. So guys, please let us know in the comments below what do you think of the new way we are presenting the cases to you. If you are new here, please don't forget to make sure you hit the big red subscribe button below and also make sure you hit the notification bell so you are the first one to know about any new videos we upload. In today's video, we want to talk to you about the Sarah Everett case. But before we get started, here is the disclaimer. I do not mean to be disrespectful to anyone I talk about in today's video. The video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. The information I collect is from the internet. I compile this information, I make a video and from this you are more than welcome to draw your own conclusions. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah was bright and beautiful, a wonderful daughter and sister. She was kind and caring. She always put others first and had the most amazing sense of humor. She was strong and a shining example to her family and friends. She brought joy to everyone she knew. Sarah, 33 years old, was born in Surrey in 1987. Oh, she's my age. And she was raised in York, where she attended nearby comprehensive Falford School. She later studied human geography at St. Cuthbert's College at Durham University from 2005 to 2008, before moving to London and starting work as a marketing account manager. Like many graduates, Sarah chose to live in Brixton, a popular flat share hotspot among young professionals. She worked at several marketing and PR agencies since moving to London, graduating from senior account manager to group account director between 2009 and 2020. In February, she started a new job at Flipside Group, a digital media agency based in Holborn. On her LinkedIn profile, Sarah describes herself as a positive presence with a caring attitude for her work and team and friends say she was looking forward to starting the new position. Sarah's boyfriend was part of the story from the beginning. When information about her disappearance were released, police confirmed that she made a 15-minute phone call to her boyfriend after leaving her friend by Clapham Common. Sarah and her boyfriend ended the call after arranging to meet. He raised the alarm to police the next day when his girlfriend failed to turn up. CCTV from an estate agent on the corner of the street where she lives showed no sign of her passing and returning to her flat. Sarah's boyfriend is Josh Louth, 33 years old, a marketing director at a company that organizes trade shows called MA Exhibitions, according to his LinkedIn profile. Josh lives just a couple of streets from Sarah in Brixton. Sarah's father, Jeremy, 67, is a professor of electronics at York University and her mother, Sue, 64 years old, works in charity. They live in York where Sarah grew up and then traveled to London to help with the search in finding her. Sarah's two older siblings, Katie and James, have also been helping along with cousins, aunts, uncles and friends. They were all 
shocked when they heard the police officer was arrested as part of the investigation. On March the 2nd, Wayne Cousins, a serving police officer, begins a 12-hour shift at 7 p.m. before going on leave. On March the 3rd, Sarah goes missing after leaving a friend's house in Clapham, South London. At around 9 p.m., to make the 2.5 mile journey home, she is captured alone on CCTV at 9.15 p.m., caught again alone on a camera at 9.28 p.m., and later caught alone on the camera of a marked police car at 9.32 p.m. At around 9.35 p.m., a bus camera captures two figures on Pointers Road and the white Vauxhall Astra with its hazard lights flashing. Another bus camera captures the same car with both front doors open. The registration of the vehicle, later confirmed to be a car hired in Dover, is captured and tracked by police as it leaves London towards Kent. On March the 5th, Wayne Cousins, who is due back at work in a few days, reports that he is suffering from stress. On March the 6th, Metropolitan Police raised the alarm over Sarah's disappearance. On the same day, Wayne, a trained firearms officer, emails his supervisor to say he does not want to carry a firearm anymore. Suspicious, isn't it? Wayne was a member of the Army Reserves serving in the 3rd Battalion, the Princess of Wales Royal Regiment, for two years from 2002. He transferred to the Met Police in 2018. The officer worked in the Westminster Base Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Command, which protects VIPs and guards sites such as the Palace of Westminster, Downing Street and the embassies. Good position for mm, him. Yes. Wayne Cousins was primarily assigned to guard embassies in London, according to reports. It seems he worked a six hour relief shift at the American Embassy in Nine Elms, about three miles from, from where Sarah went missing, until 8 pm the night of Sarah's disappearance. So on the same night. On the same night, yes. Reports are emerging that police had details about the car used by Wayne Cousins, who committed the indecent exposure in McDonald's in South London just three days before Sarah's Everett's disappearance. According to the Sun, eyewitnesses at the Burger Bar in South London took details of the vehicle allegedly used by Wayne who flashed a staff before running off. Police believe the flashing incident took place three days before Sarah was snatched from the street as she walked home. Cops were given CCTV from the incident by staff along with a description and registration of the car being driven by the suspect. However, no action appears to have been taken by police Apparently, police simply didn't have time to investigate the incident. Or, as I would like to believe, they couldn't be bothered because maybe they believed that he was one of their own. You know, it works that way, isn't mm. it? Yes. It seems his colleagues knew about his indecent exposure but chose not to do anything. It's unbelievable could be something in the lines of protecting your own as we know happens more often than not well yes you sort of abuse your position and uh, your colleagues cover for you because you they have the police one of badge this. yes yes the police watchdog is now investigating the incident and how Wayne's colleagues handled the report i hope they will just sort it out and they will you know He's been arrested them, at their place. Oh, well, we'll see about that. <clears throat> Apparently, the complaint didn't reach command level 
and his colleagues are unlikely to have been aware of the allegation. Well, some of his colleagues are aware of the allegation, but obviously not the whole police team. Hmm. The allegation is not related to Miss Everett. On the 7th of March, footage taken from a doorbell camera shows Miss Everett walking along along the A205 Pointers Road towards Tulsi Hill at 2130. Police say it is unclear whether or not she reached her house in Brixton. On the 8th of March, more than 120 calls are made from the public on the case and more than 750 homes are visited as part of the investigation. That's huge. It is. 750 homes. Yeah. Wow. Doverborn, Wayne Cousins, is a married dad of two. Married and dad of two as well and the constable with the Metropolitan Police. Police arrested him on the 9th of March at his terraced house in the coastal town of Deal, where he lives with his Ukraine-born wife, Elena, 38-year-old lab manager and their two young children. So just imagine good positions for both of them. Good house, two kids what else do you need yeah he was supposed to have a happy married life just like everybody else does the couple met more than 10 years ago a woman in her 30s who was arrested at the same address on suspicion of assisting an offender has been released on bail until mid of april the woman is reported by kent life to be wayne's partner so she was the one then. Yes, she was the one. Probably she didn't believe what he did or, or that he did. Or, may that. or maybe she helped him without realizing why she's helping him. Yes, true. That it can be two ways. Or maybe she helped him after everything that's happened so that, uh, you know, she doesn't, he doesn't get time in prison. Yeah. It can go two ways, really. We don't know yet. Yes. The town of Dill is about 75 miles southwest of Clapham. Car linked to the murder suspect was allegedly spotted on a motorist's dash cam near to where Miss Everett was last seen and tracked by ANPR cameras. The ANPR technology is used to help detect deter and disrupt criminality at the local force regional and national level including tackling traveling criminals organized crime groups and terrorists wayne cousins was initially arrested on suspicion of kidnap however on wednesday the 10th of march he was further arrested on suspicion of murder and the separate allegation of indecent exposure so was it then um charges were brought char against him for the allegation of indecent, <coughs> indecent exposure but we don't know about his colleagues those of them who knew we right. don't know what happened with yeah. them yet on the 11th of march the suspect is taken to hospital after suffering head injuries while in custody oh wow that's so big now so he probably self-inflicted those injuries. I think so because from a, from a few reports, it seems that he was alone in his cell. So, and there was no one with him at the time uh, when so they found out he's got injuries. Hit his head in the wall. I suppose he was trying to get something, something out of something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Police don't believe Sarah Everett and Wayne Cousins knew each other, and detectives believe Sarah was lured off the street and the investigation is being treated as a stranger attack. Officers spent days searching devices and social media for digital evidence. So they looked everywhere then. It was pretty covered. It was, it was. It was a great response uh, from the police in this regard, really. Yeah. According to Wayne's neighbors, he was shirtless and handcuffed when the police took him away last Tuesday. His house was being watched by two men in a Land Rover 
at around 5 p.m. just before officers knocked on his door two hours later. Between 15 and 20 more officers were hidden around the corner as the house was stormed, the neighbor added. Oh wow, that's huge. Yeah, it seems that the neighbor actually spotted the police officers hiding uh, behind trees and in the bushes from his uh, window from his house from the window so yeah but that's huge numbers there it is it is maybe they didn't know he's got a firearm or how he's going oh, to right. respond mm. or but i think that they waited uh, for so long for him just to confirm that he's coming home before going in there and arresting him mm. or maybe they didn't want to scare the kids off or i don't know we i don't know that he was arrested after returning from a shift in London. Speaking as the house was searched by police, neighbors said they often saw or spoke to Wayne, a motorbike enthusiast and his family, describing them as friendly and polite. They said they've seen him wearing his police uniform in the past. Neighbors claim police were digging up the garden as well. Forensics officers in blue suits were seen going through the house and garage. Two cars were removed from the property. So that's related to the case. Maybe they tried to gather more information on forensics. Yes, I think that one of them is related to the case. And I think the second one is related to the uh, indecent exposure oh, allegation because oh. he was spotted with the car. Oh, right. at the um, McDonald's. It seems detectives investigating Sarah's disappearance have been told of assaults on women in the area. In January, Metropolitan Police received a report of sexual harassment on a young female on Hydethorpe Road, just half a mile from where Sarah was last caught on CCTV. At the start of February, a woman was witnessed being chased by a man just over a mile away. Chased? She was chased, yeah. Then, just three weeks ago, before Sarah's disappearance, a 14-year-old girl was followed by a man in a van less than half a mile from where Sarah was last seen. Oh my God, that's whew, scary. Meanwhile, other women said they reported groups of men following a woman in neighboring district Balham. But Scotland Yard said they are not linking Sarah's disappearance to any other incidents. After Wayne's arrest, police were seen searching for Sarah Everard and they confirmed having found human remains in Ashford, in a wooded area. Yes. The Met Police carried out searches in Dill, his, his place, and Ashford on March the 10th. Around 150 police officers had been combing through the area close to the former site of Great Chart Golf and Leisure since the early hours of Wednesday. 150 police officers yeah because uh, they were searching for her so I think that they had a lot of area to cover yeah yeah officers in blue body suits could be seen scouring the area with the helicopter also circling constantly there was also a tent put up in front of a house in deal where multiple cars were taken away now known to be Wayne's house a metal fence was later also erected surrounding the front garden and driveway. So they just tried to keep it... Uh, uh, I think they tried to keep it close from the public so yeah. and maybe so others don't see what they are doing to in there. To contaminate the... Yeah. Yes. And you know that uh, <laughs> when people see what's happening when the police is around they are just curious and they just want to go and yeah. see what's happening. Yeah. So. Sarah Everett disappeared on the 3rd of March and Wayne Cousins is charged with kidnapping and killing Sarah. Sarah's body was found 50 miles away from where she was last seen in the woodland area in Ashford, hidden in a large builder's bag near the former site of the Golf and Leisure Centre. In a large builder's bag. 
in a large bill that's back. The cause of death has not been revealed. However, Sarah was identified using dental records. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to switch on the heating because <coughs> I'm actually shaking cold. So, considering the fact that Wayne emailed his workplace saying he doesn't want to use a firearm anymore, I assume his gun led to Sarah's death. So, I suspect that's the reason why he wanted to get rid of the firearm before he would be linked to Sarah's disappearance. Yes. I don't know exactly what he was uh, trying to accomplish here by saying that he doesn't want to use the firearm unless he was hoping that if he uh, surrenders his firearm, as they say, or he gives uh, the firearm back to the police force, that maybe that firearm would be given to someone else oh, yeah. and traces will be lost of any uh, yeah. potential evidence. I have no idea. But remember that he said he was stressed yes yes so he probably tried to kind of give a reason mm -hmm. why he wants to get rid of the firearm i think uh, when he was trying to plan all this uh, cover-up that he didn't do it and getting rid of the evidence i don't think he was thinking of all the actions he's taking after such as the stress he called off uh, sick from work because yeah. he was stressed which if you think about it in a police investigation everything links together yeah. He got stressed after he killed her, yeah. right? Yeah. So, Although we are not sure what exactly happened between him and Sarah, so we can only speculate on that. It's possible he lured her in the car with his police badge. She probably trusted him. Maybe he asked for help and she trusted the police officer and helped him. So you trust, you put your trust in a police officer which is in service to protect exactly you as part of the public, right? And then he kills you. Yes. I think that's what he was because when you see a police officer in his police car and he asks you for help or just to approach you in some way, you respond, isn't it? Because you trust the police officer. He's a police yeah. officer, yeah. He's, uh, he's serving uh, the citizens. So obviously, yeah. you are not thinking in a million years that, that the same police officer will kidnap will. you and kill you. Yes, yes, <laughs> true. Yeah. And he tried to kidnap Sarah. There could have been a struggle. His firearm discharged or was used which led to Sarah's death, you know maybe it was an accident or maybe he really used it it might have been that she was reluctant to do whatever he asked her and he pointed a gun at her trying to yeah. take her away in that way we just don't know but i i suppose as well because uh, he was saying about his firearm that somehow that firearm led to sarah's death if sarah was identified by her medical records there is another possibility that perhaps she could uh, not have been identified in any other way. Either she was disfigured or the police chose not to put her family through the pain of identifying her body. I'm just not sure but if she was disfigured it is quite possible Wayne set her body on fire in an attempt to get rid of any evidence. It, it, it's a, no, a possibility it's a possibility it, yes because there is no um, post-mortem um, released no yet so I think that they are keeping that as part of the trial it might not be released until after the investigation is finished we don't know that but mm. uh, it's a bit uh, it's a bit suspicious that they could only identify her through the medical records because dental uh, dent sorry dental records not medical yes, yes. Because we know in most of the cases there is a process the police follows where yeah. they call the immediate family to recognize to, to recognize to identify the body yeah. yes otherwise it's very strange he would decide to dump her body in an area so close to his own house it was quite close it was it was an area that he knew so you see uh, this goes back to usually killers 
they they uh, dump plan. their they plan and dump their bod yeah. the bodies of the victims in a place where, where they, they know where they know yes yeah. he was either too stupid or too arrogant to believe he could get away with it or he was trying to play smart and attempted to get rid of evidence well he didn't really think of CCTV though, did he? No, he didn't. And I'm really happy that they had the CCTV on the buses. Yes, see that makes a huge difference. Yes. Remember when we came here in this country, when we moved to London, we were always complaining that there's so much CCTV everywhere, you can't yeah. take a step without CCTV. But now I come to the conclusion, conclusion. that it's a good uh, yes. thing. Yes, it's much better than without. I would like to go with the option that he was just plain stupid and arrogant. My opinion only, don't sue me. <laughs> On the 15th of March, police divers were seen searching the river store in Sandwich in Kent while other officers looked on the cars in and in a trolley shelter outside the supermarket in the town. Sandwich Town Council said it was in contact with Kent Police on behalf of Scotland Yard as part of the investigation and urged residents not to gather near the scene. Officers were seen using sticks to search through the a trolley shelter at the Corp supermarket in Sandwich, while their colleagues looked under vehicles. At the edge of a cordon, a number of officers gathered and were seen discussing over a gold necklace found on top of a car park ticket machine, which was then put in an evidence bag, but it is not known if it's related to Sarah Everett. A unit of divers from Devon and Cornwall were sent to the scene with officers seen in the waters of the Star River. Metropolitan police officers have also set up a separate scene with a tent and equipment in the Gilho car park. A set of recycling bins were also cordoned off and it's suspected police will search through those as well as they still haven't found Sarah's mobile phone so he, he got rid of her mobile phone probably she was recording him I don't know and don't because maybe she had the passcode or something like that and he, he couldn't could. access to remove those um, that proof pictures or videos or, or even um, sound Yes, I have no idea, but uh, I, I can't really see why he would uh, get rid of her phone unless, obviously, there was something incriminating yes. on that phone. Yes, So, uh, it's possible, it is possible, though, that he could have easily get rid of her phone even in his bin, in his rubbish bin. Maybe he knew the collection day for the bins, he just, uh, you know, chucked the phone in there and he um, went to the landfill and it's possible that this phone is gone. We, mm. we don't know because it was turned off and uh, all the calls were going through uh, the voicemail. voicemail yeah I, but I think that her phone pinged at some point didn't it and uh, no not, they said no no, no? Oh, okay maybe he even took out the sim card from her the phone we don't know that further searches are underway in Dill and at the network of wartime tunnels in Dover near to where Wayne's now closed family's car garage was. So he worked uh, in uh, his family's garage before? As a mechanic. As a mechanic. Yeah, with his dad, isn't it? Yes. I can't imagine how his uh, parents are feeling right now, <laughs> knowing what he did. The serving Metropolitan Police officer charged with the kidnap and murder of Sarah Everard appeared in court for the second time. Police Constable Wayne Cousins, 48 years old, was arrested at his home in Deal Kent on March the 9th before being charged with the death of the 33-year-old Sarah Everard while in police custody. He appeared at Westminster Magistrates Court on Saturday, March 13th, where he was remanded in custody, then appeared at the Old Bailey 
on Tuesday, March 16th. Wayne Cousins, who appeared via video link, spoke only to confirm his name, date of birth and address to the court. The hearing, which lasted around 30 minutes, mainly saw prosecutor Tom Little and the judge presiding over the case, recorder of London Judge Mark Lucraft, discuss case management issues. This is about uh, really setting dates by which prosecution evidence should be served to the court. When Cousins appeared to be rocking back and forth throughout the hearing. Well, of course he would, right? He got caught and now he's going to the general population, well, hopefully. No prisoners like ex-police in prison, really. They'll probably just have a really, really good time with him. And I really hope that that's gonna happen. The police officer was remanded in custody to appear at the Old Bailey for a plea and trial preparation hearing on July the 9th, 2021. A provisional trial date has been set for October 25th, 2021. Police continue to come through the sandwich area of Kent on March 16th as part of the investigation into Sarah's disappearance. Metropolitan Police has made a number of referrals to the Independent Office for Police Conduct with regard to the disappearance of Sarah Everard. Referrals have been made into whether Metropolitan Police officers responded appropriately to a report of indecent exposure. Further referrals have been made following Wayne Cousins being taken to hospital due to head injuries on two separate occasions while in police custody. Wayne needed treatment for an injury sustained in custody on Friday 12th of March. He was later discharged and returned to a police station. The incident came just a day, one day after Wayne Cousins, who has been charged with the murder and kidnap of Sarah Everard, was found unconscious in his cell and had to be rushed to hospital. This is the second incident. During the earlier incident on Thursday 11th of March, reports said that Wayne was found collapsed, injured in his cell and had to receive immediate treatment on the scene before being admitted to hospital. On both occasions, he was released the same day and of course taken back to his cell. There is no suggestion anyone else was involved on both occasions. I mean, I suppose that he maybe he got too angry at himself for not getting away with it and beat himself up over it. Or maybe he was just trying to give himself extensive injuries and use that in court. Yeah, that's more plausible. Yes. I really don't know what was he trying to accomplish here, but either way, his arrogance and stupidity, don't sue me my opinion, if I might add, is not helping him in any way possible. Not that he should really. <laughs> A mad police officer guarding the scene where Sarah Everard's body was found is alleged to have sent colleagues a vile joke about her kidnap and murder. The police constable is said to have shared an, a meme which showed six images. Apparently the images about violence against women were sent in a WhatsApp group last Thursday, the day after the body of marketing executive Miss Sarah Everard was found in the woods near Ashford, Kent. So can you can you believe? I think that he was the officer who was actually guarding the cordoned off area, wasn't yes, he? Yes. So he decided that that's a good time to to make a joke. Yeah. Whilst they were picking up yeah. uh, Sarah Everett's pieces, so to speak. Mm, well, her so body. Speak, whilst yeah. they were recovering her body, it's just disrespectful, really. Not only disrespectful, but is uh, is not professional at no, all. No, no. You are in that profession to to you know you are in that profession to help citizens and to show give them uh, example and lead, you know lead by example yes and uh, yes yes but he what he did uh, it wasn't nice or good so i hope they will sort it out somehow hopefully Colleagues reported the incident, mm. the same mm. incident, to, bo to bosses on Friday, resulting in the officer being removed from the murder investigation and placed on restricted duties with no direct involvement with the public. I'm hoping that they will do much more to him than just that. Well, yeah, but probably they try to uh, talk to him and uh, have a chat and explain 
that these things don't need to be done especially in, in so you know in such difficult times so probably he will learn something from it let's hope so we don't know this incident anyway is also being referred to the independent office for police conduct i honestly can't understand how any police officer w would find this okay as a conduct honestly especially with everything that's happening that's been happening lately ex-metropolitan detective chief inspector mick neville said and i quote any decent officer knows the limits joking about a horrific murder and kidnap whilst the family is grieving is completely unacceptable the last thing the met needs is anything else to undermine the public's trust in the force and this will do just that end of quote he was right he's right the death of sarah everard has prompted an outpouring of emotion and a national debate over the safety of women on the UK's streets. On Saturday evening, the 13th of March, hundreds of people gathered at Clapham Common in South London to pay tribute to Sarah. Saturday's vigil for Sarah was held despite police warning it would breach pandemic regulations. But what started as a peaceful event would later turn ugly as officers clashed with crowds and made several arrests. Throughout the afternoon, people leave tributes to Sarah at a bandstand in Clapham Common, near to the route she took home when she went missing. By 4 p.m., around 200 people are gathered at the site. At 5.30 p.m., people head towards the bandstand and about 10 police officers are scattered around the perimeter of the bandstand area. At 5.45 p.m., a man walks onto the bandstand and says he wants to make a speech in front of the quiet crowd. He then starts shouting about the death of Sarah and the pandemic's regulations. Some people in the crowd start booing. The man is then led away by police. At 6 p.m., a minute's silence is held in memory of Sarah. The crowd has grown to more than 500 people and the police presence is increasing too. Some people in the crowd begin chanting, Sisters United will never be defeated, while placards are held up saying, We will not be silenced, and she was just walking home. A few minutes later, a local councillor on the stage urges people to begin leaving, but very few respond. At 7.20 p.m., a woman is seen being shoved forcefully in the back by two officers after being lifted from her knees. She then tries to bend down near the officers and she is shoved back again. The woman can be heard shouting that she is just trying to find and uh, retrieve her glasses. So you see, this kind of thing just defeats the whole purpose of it really, because you have the you have the police officer he yeah. he is a man and yeah. he killed sarah everard so already you you distrust uh, distrust the police in in a sense yes and then you've got uh, so many police officers most of them men going to a woman's vigil attacking women it kind of defeats the purpose of everything yeah. you know yeah true at 7.22 p.m., Metropolitan Police officers grab women stood within the bandstand before leading them away. Among those arrested is Patsy Stevenson, whose image goes viral after being arrested. She told Sky News she was terrified as a police officer leading her away warned that he had a baton. Yeah. I have a baton, yeah? Yeah. He uh, told her something in the in the likes of um, you need to stop, I'm going to arrest you, um, I have a baton and he was talking to the other police officers with them so it was sort of like a warning to her that if she doesn't behave, yeah, he's she, got a baton, she, she will get it. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. At around 8 p.m. police appear to have regained control. Many who are in the crowd have moved away from the bandstand, but those left are laying candles and flowers. The Metropolitan Police said four people were arrested for public order and pandemic regulation breaches. Three of them, a man and two women, were arrested 
on suspicion of breaching the health protection regulation and have been reported for consideration of a fixed penalty notice. Fixed penalty notice. I don't know, it's... <laughs> a fourth person, a woman in her teens, was arrested on suspicion of a public order offence and has been released under police investigation. Metropolitan Police Assistant Commissioner Helen Ball said hundreds of people had paid their respects to Sarah in a safe and lawful way over six hours. However, she said that at around 6 p.m. more people began gathering close to the bandstand with some making speeches which attracted a bigger crowd. There were a lot of uh, speeches being made and uh, the speeches, I didn't want to add everything on here, but the speeches that were being made by certain people, they had um, a loud hailer and they were um, trying to instigate, in a way, anger in the crowd. Oh, yeah. You know, by suggesting some, uh, some really bad things, bad things yeah. about the police and the pandemic and so they're trying to... Mm. Get the Manipulate people angry. Yes. Somehow, yeah. Yes. Got it. The organizers of the vigil reclaimed these streets, said the group was deeply saddened and angered by scenes of officers physically manhandling women at a vigil against male violence. Again, I say this just defeats the purpose, really. Yeah. In a statement, it said, and I quote, from the start, reclaimed these streets, set out to work closely with a mat to ensure this vigil could go ahead safely so women could stand together peacefully and safely to remember Sarah Everard and all the women lost to male violence. It is their responsibility to protect public order, public health and the right to protest. They failed on Saturday night on all accounts." End of quote. Campaign group Sisters Uncut claimed the Metropolitan Police and I quote, waited for the sun to set before they started grabbing and manhandling women in the crowd. End of quote, immediate steps aimed at improving safety for women and girls in England and Wales have been announced by number 10 after Sarah Evers' death. Following a meeting of the government's Crime and Justice Task Force on Monday evening, Downing Street said it would take immediate steps to give further reassurance to women and girls in the wake of the killing of Miss Sarah Everard. Number 10 said it would double the size of the Safer Streets Fund which provides local measures such as better lighting and CCTV to 45 million pounds. Undercover police will be sent to clubs, bars and popular night spots to relay intelligence about predatory or suspicious offenders to uniformed officer, officers in pilots of so-called Project Vigilant, rolled out across the country. Labour has criticised the bill, saying it did nothing to help women feel safer and imposed disproportionate controls on freedom of speech. Mrs. Patel said the bill would end the halfway release of those convicted of sexual offenses such as rape and also said the domestic abuse bill was on track to receive royal assent by the end of April which she said would transform our collective response to this aberrant crime. Okay without getting too much into you know the political side of it because i hate politics i know you like politics but this is not the video for you know for politics in general personally i have to say i don't agree with this bill but like i said i don't want to get into too much detail the only thing i would say really is that this bill to me is not helping tackle whatever needs to be tackled really more cctv funding is not helpful if people are being attacked in remote areas there are criminals who on purpose they just go and look around the areas without cctv and they lure the victims there where they can't be seen on cctv yeah true everything mentioned in the bill is just around the issue but it's not helping to solve the issue it's just going around it it's like a circle but you're not focusing on the point you're just going around yeah it doesn't it, to me that's how it looks like I, I really don't know 
Police getting powers over protests does not help in any way to avoid what happened to Sarah Everett from happening to someone else. And blaming, and this is the most important thing really, blaming every single man for a few who are criminals does not help either. Because not all men are criminals, just like not all women are not criminals. Of course, one person can't spot the criminal from a crowd of people, it's obvious. However, I strongly believe that this works both ways, for men and women as well. There are men who are criminals and there are women who are criminals. And we shouldn't discriminate men and we shouldn't discriminate women either. It simply just works both ways. This will just divide more and more men and women. And we will get to a point where a man will be too afraid to look at a woman in public for fear of being accused of harassment. And also, we are husband and wife, we have children, we have a boy and we have a girl. And then you need to think about uh, your boy's future. How are you going to educate him when he grows up how to behave around women as a general idea? In society. In society, yes. I know that, of course, you will educate your child, your children, no matter they are uh, girls or boys, that they need to be respectful, that, um, you know, they don't need to be... that they need to be respectful, they don't need to attack people, they don't need to be abusive towards their partner or friends or family or all, all these kind of things. But also, you are, you are going to raise your boy in today's society where he will be too scared to even try and find himself a girlfriend yeah because he will not know the response he will receive from approaching a girl to ask her to be the girlfriend yeah you know what i mean yeah that's why i'm saying that it goes both ways men shouldn't abuse women women shouldn't abuse men because not not only men are abusers women are abusers as well and to put to put uh, men in general in the same circle is just not fair and is not right and i think it will just create division really probably that's the point to create division i i don't know I this bill doesn't give uh, any kind of power to women no this it doesn't. bill doesn't help in any way to support women and to um, make safer uh, areas for women no it doesn't cctv doesn't really help much because if somebody wants to do something it will do it either way yes exactly right? they will just find find a way around it but cctv has been proven that it helps in identifying those perpetrators yes right but other than that there is nothing that a cctv can do to avoid something from happening also lighting that's a good thing to add more light uh, where it's dark uh, this this areas where they don't they don't cover with lighting yes it is helpful it gives you a bit of boost but yet i'm going back to what i said earlier about cctv it doesn't um help in avoiding criminal activities no i don't think it does help no and also if a, a criminal let's say for example they decide that they want to assault someone sexually i'm not going to say that they are going to assault someone sexually a woman being sexually assaulted i will say in general because women are assaulted and men are assaulted as well yeah if he is planning to do that he will scan the whole area that he wants to do it he will already know where his next victim is at and he will already know if he planned it the um, the area the area and also the route that the woman or the man the victim would be using and so he will try to find a, a place which is remote which is not with lighting which is not with cctv because guys if you are not from the uk or if you don't live in the uk don't think about cctv that there are some hidden cameras no there are no hidden cameras they are not small cameras either you can spot them from miles away if you are walking you can see right in front of you 
is a pole and at the top of the pole is the CCTV camera. It works the same way on the highways with speed cameras. You can see them. It's not like they are hidden and you can do and uh, go and do your criminal activities and uh, you can't know that they are there. You do know that they are there. There are also, not to, to, not, to not forget to mention, there are also signs where they show cameras is around. The camera is around. Yes. So CCTV in operation. Just imagine, you already have the sign there. You you get to know there is there should be a camera in that area. So you just have a look, and until you find it. Yes. And then you know for sure where is the dead uh, angle. So you can just you know you are out of the spot. There you go. Yes, the, I, I really do believe that there must be a better way of trying to protect women from being attacked on the streets, assaulted, raped, sexually harassed and killed. But it shouldn't involve what it, it is involve, involving now, as in cre just creating division. You, you see how it can be. Men will be scared of women, women will be scared of men. It, it works both ways really yeah. in any, any way you put it it still works both ways you can't say that uh, men are more criminal than women are more criminal like you, you can't say that the man has b a bigger strength than a woman to kill her and she doesn't have the strength necessary to kill him for example we know from so many cases that women they can be killers they killed a man they killed their whole family so there is a strength when the adrenaline is kicking you have the strength to do anything really yeah in that in that particular point and when you have the idea and you go uh, with your idea and uh, that ideology that makes you believe that's what i need to do this is what i want to do you have the will you have the power you have the the force and uh, the idea goes further you can't change your mind and somehow even like some sort of health issues like mental health issues and st stuff like that that helps and adds to the force that can be used in um, making a crime really you know doing a crime criminal activity so it, it, it works the same way in men's um, branch as in women's branch so it's like we need to uh, understand that what can be done in order to help more, more to add more safety to the uh, roads in in the UK for women and girls is to add more police on the streets, especially during night. Not only that, but we need to educate our kids not to reach this point and this level. We need to educate our kids to be nice, to respect each other, to love each other, to help each other. This is the way we need to do with our kids in order to avoid criminal activities. The, the other way is that we need tougher, tougher tougher sentences, sentences for those who we need tougher sentences for those who uh, do such things yes rape kidnapping anything really domestic abuse anything that's related to that to hurting somebody to for the purpose of uh, destroying their lives for the purpose of killing somebody even the attempt they need to put in place tougher sentences for those people to give them the reason of like i can't be doing this because i will get in jail such as that person and i will rot there in jail we need examples to lead this society somewhere where they have to think twice before doing something bad to somebody tougher sentences more police on the streets obviously more light cctv yes okay agree with that but this too don't really help when it comes to somebody's mind 
if they want really want to do something they will do it yes no matter will. what yes so education as well we need to educate our kids to be better people and these things will help right yes and honestly the bill that they put out uh, from number 10 is not going to help in educating our children no and men should understand that their presence on the street during night should show support not scaremongering tactics support everyone respect everyone respect the that distance respect their area personal area uh, be nice polite talk nicely uh, don't push it too too much because obviously women are scared they always been scared and we didn't show any kind of support in that matter we need to take steps to make sure that women are not scared anymore on the streets during night especially we need to, to make a change positive change that matters it's not like we can change from a day to another it takes time but we need to show that kind of change that we take the right path to that to make that change we need to do something about it I'm sorry I'm a man but I respect every woman every person no matter what they are man or woman I respect everybody as you respect others you will get the same respect the same level respect to be respected be nice polite and please just listen to what the women say because they have a say in this now and we need to listen to that right no right yes okay Okay. Yes, I agree with uh, I agree with everything you said, and uh, all I want to say is that there has to be a better way to handle things. There has to be a better way of doing this for everyone to be safe, men and women. One last thing I will say is that uh, I was very pleasantly surprised at the response of the police in uh, dealing with Sarah Everett's uh, disappearance and trying to find her. There was a lot of police force out there from the beginning uh, doing the best that they could to try and find what happened with Sarah. Yeah. And uh, I am not sure at exactly what point it became so much in the media about her case because usually it doesn't happen but it, this was an even better thing that it was constantly in the media because it put more pressure on the police to, to find out yeah. yes to find out what happened yeah. and we got to the point where we already know more or less what happened and the suspect is in prison awaiting trial so it ended not in a good way because it ended yes, in a horrible way but at least he's brought to justice yes and i think with this we will end today's video thank you so much everyone for watching if you like this kind of video with me and my husband both in the video please let us know in the comments below and we will try our best to carry on doing the same thing we did yes for now thank you so much for watching stay safe and take care bye and don't forget to hit the big red subscribe button below mm. below below yes below below yes thank you thank you very much bye, bye. according to the sun i'd witnesses at the burger bar in again 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 according to the sun i'd we <laughs> <laughs> According to the sun <laughs> 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 <laughs>
According to the Sun, eyewitnesses. <laughs> Good job, Bobix. <laughs> okay. Da te oprești, da? Da. Okay. According to the Sun. <laughs> 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 